times most Mox users had not changed their passwords and therefore many were labeled inactive. Um, even though you uh, were able to continue to log into MOTS, uh, MOTS uh, didn't talk to the Active Directory to tell it that you are still an active user. So uh, you probably disabled. Uh, and so uh, what has happened is we sent out an email on March 15th explaining what happened you you might have received that and the steps that you need to take to make sure that uh, if you were one of those uh, users that were uh, made inactive if you could go on to the next slide uh, kayla So if you were unable to log into the Active Directory or Citrix, we ask that you fill out a form to reinstate your existing account. Uh, that will put it on a list that Cecilia and I are working through. Uh, we will then uh, request a put in a ticket to request that your username be re-enabled. It takes a few days for it to process. And once it's processed, uh, we get uh, an email back from the service desk saying that the ticket has been processed and we will send you um, instructions on what to do. You should also receive from the service desk an email with your temporary password. Once you've received that password, uh, please wait for our instructions because we're going to tell you to go into the Active Directory or log into Citrix and change your password. Um, put, uh, and then close out your browser and then wait for up to an hour because the Active Directory needs to talk to the MOTS database that your password has been changed. And then you should be able to go into MOTS and log in with your username and the new password that you created. Uh, we've, uh, I've, there have been people that get their temporary password and they go immediately to MOTS and they're they're in with the temporary password. The problem is uh, that once you log out, you haven't changed anything in the Active Directory, and you'll you'll get yourself locked out of the Active Directory, <laughs> and possibly mods. And so uh, you'll have to call. We tell them in that case, well, reset you in mods, but we can't send you a new password on our end that has to come from the service desk and you'll need to call the service desk to get unlocked in the active directory and get a new temporary password um, and uh, we just ask that you just put on your calendar to log into the active directory and change your password uh, about every 50 days once you change your password, uh, uh, please wait for an hour for the change to be communicated to MOTS. And if you need further assistance, please email email us at MOTS support and we can help. Um, I just apologize that it's a lot of uh, inconvenience uh, for you, but uh, we're unable to reset passwords. That's all done from the service desk. And uh, from what I understand, it can only be done by phone. Uh, their office hours are Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, and as you can imagine, uh, it's kept Cecilia and I uh, rather busy uh, helping people uh, regain access to MOTS. So, uh, that's all I have. Uh, Kayla, if you uh, want to uh, go.
go over to the next uh, slide. Great, thanks, Mary. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I want to give a big shout out to Mary and Cecilia <laughs> for really handling the bulk of this unexpected issue that we came across um, a couple weeks ago. And like, I'm just going to reiterate what Mary already said is that we understand that this is a giant hassle and we know that this process is complex and time consuming and we are working really hard to for the replacement to be easier. So we know that there's some functionality in MOTS that can take a lot of time and we're aware of that and we're really working hard to make sure that the new system roads um, will be much easier for providers to use. And speaking of roads, um, oh, before I forget, I've also posted a link to the latest MOTS Messenger um, as a web page, and that has detailed instructions for how to check if your account was affected um, in that script that ran a couple weeks ago. So if you need that, that's in the chat. Um, as for roads, we're still working hard. Um, release for roads will be late this year. And in the meantime, keep doing what you're doing. You know, when when we get closer to a release date, um, we're going to be coming out with trainings. With we'll have adequate preparation for everyone, so no one needs to feel uh, worried about that coming and and being sprung on you. There will be plenty of heads up. Um, if anything, I like to give people too much heads up sometimes, but I just want to make sure that no one feels uh, blindsided by this change. Um, if you have questions about roads or you think that someone in your agency should be getting information about roads that might not be, I have a roads communication list that I can put a link to. I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, feel free to give that to sign up for it yourself. Although if you're already getting MOTS things, you'll automatically get roads information as it comes out. Um, but if there's someone in your organization that might not be directly related to MOTS work, but is is interested in roads in the new system, feel free to have them fill out this form um, and to make sure that everybody feels adequately informed about the upcoming change. Uh, let me put that in the chat right now. And I will pass back the microphone to Jody Kramer. Hey, thanks, Kayla. Good morning, everybody. Great to see you all here. So, yeah, we've had some inquiries lately about, um, you know, what ha what do I do if I don't know the date of birth for a crisis service? Uh, mainly, it's been crisis services that have uh, been in question because we know sometimes you may not have all the information or accurate information when you're helping somebody who is in crisis. So what we um, have found from prior systems is we recommend that you use 7-1, so July 1, of just an estimated year of birth. So, you know, we know that can vary a little bit, but uh, just use your best judgment on that. But 7-1 will allow us, July 1st, to be able to run some reports and different things like that to help identify uh, what, what may be the placeholders for crisis services that um, don't have that accurate date of birth. So that's our recommendation at the moment. Um, as uh, roads moves forward, we'll have more information um, and new documentation coming out or updated documentation rebranded to roads. But um, yeah, that that is what our recommendation is. So if you have any questions or other um, folks at your organization do, please just reach out to us at MOT Support and we will help get an answer uh, to whatever questions you have. Kayla, I'll go ahead and turn it back to you. All right, well, thank you, Jody. Um, and this is quick. This is just my monthly um, heads up for our MOTS refresher that we've started having. I know, as I'm sure, most of you know, sometimes MOTS responsibilities can move around in an agency, somebody leaves, somebody gets promoted, um, and it can, somebody at the agency might have been, you know, a very experienced MOTS user, but when they're not in that role, somebody else needs to fill in. 
Um, and I want to make sure that that's easy for folks to do. So I've started, um, or the team has started a MOTS refresher, which happens the second Wednesday of the month. And this is for anybody that's new to MOTS or anyone who maybe has been away from MOTS for a while or needs to, you know, just get a nice, ref refreshers are always good. Um, and so this gives us an opportunity to give some why behind the MOT system. Why are we collecting this data? How is it being used? What kind of data are we collecting? Because not everybody is submitting the same data. Um, and gives you an uh, us an opportunity to answer specific questions if you have them. So I will put that sign up also in the chat once I hand over the microphone once again. Um, and if you think that's helpful to you or someone else in your agency, the registration will be in the chat and feel free to sign up. And it's actually a little different than this one. It starts at 10 a.m. Um, because that was the time that fit best for us. Um, but we look forward to seeing you if you would like some, some more MOTS practice. I'm gonna hand it back over to Jody. Okay, great. Thank you. So yeah, this is kind of our old, old faithful um, <laughs> slide here for everybody. But it is important, as Kayla mentioned, we have different uh, responsibilities for MOTS changing in organizations. And also things are changing sometimes in um, your electronic health record system or kind of how you're doing things. So we oftentimes have organizations, providers like yourselves that decide, you know what, we're going to get a new EHR, or we're going to talk to our electronic health records that we currently have and see if they can add MOTS functionality um, to our system. So maybe we can send through the electronic data interchange. That's what the EDI stands for there. So if you're thinking of this, uh, first thing we'd like you to do is notify us that you, you know, notification that you're thinking of changing. Uh, even if it's not 100% solidified, just let us know. That way we can prop up enough of our resources and teams to make sure that we're able to address all of your project and your milestones and whatnot um, where we fit in. As I mentioned, the electronic health records and um, MOTS functionality, um, that is something that if you are looking at a new EHR or you're talking with your existing one, some of the things that we have gotten from back from other providers going through this process are some questions that they've asked to get some clarity around how that might work for them. So one of the um, things we ask is, or they said to ask is, what is the actual business process for this functionality? How is it gonna work from the time your client comes into your organization, is put into the system, and then actually gets submitted to MOTS? How much staff time will be required and who will do which steps? Uh, the reason we have those two questions is there's this myth a little bit that, um, you know, EDI is, is completely um, seamless and it doesn't take any, you know, much resources to do. And that may be the case, but there are still some things that have to be done and have to be administered to make sure that everything's working. So just understand how it's going to work and um, what that process looks like. So that way you'll be um, able to get your teams and everybody kind of up to speed as you're moving through your project. There's no one way that is better than another to collect data in your EHR or send it to MOTS. Um, there is just differences in the workflows. Um, all the data that comes to MOTS fits our uh, you know, file specifications. So that's our biggest concern. So again, uh, just, just kind of ask how it works. Uh, moving on from that, the project timing is important. We want to kind of know, are you fast tracking this? Or are you, you know, planning this out for 12 months? We will talk about, yes. Oh, okay. uh, we'll, we'll talk about your process for switching your data submission. So there is a process to go from client entry to EDI. And we have that well laid out, so we'll have you covered. We will set up a, what we call a secure file transfer protocol, uh, specific for your organization on our servers here that either your system or an individual at your organization will put the files into, so MOTS can process them electronically. We talk about client IDs. Um, if you're going to a new system, we may need to assist you with 
updating your client IDs to whatever your new EHR system is. Um, or if you are sending your from your existing, we might still want to just talk about that, make sure we have that covered. Uh, define your business processes. That's kind of on your side, but we're here to uh, give you answer any questions if you might have them just based on experience and whatnot. Uh, we also are going to do testing of files through EDI. So if you're looking at EHR systems and they're like, well, we already submit to MOTS or we have X amount of providers that are using our system, um, you know, that's great. But we will test your files from that same system at your provider level. And we do that because we know that the new systems and just technology has brought us into so much customization and things like that, that we just want to make sure that your file um, has all of the all of the mapping and information that MOTS requires. So it's pretty painless, but we do go through that. <laughs> and then we go live and then we do some follow up. And the follow up is basically um, as frequent as your organization feels is necessary. And it's just sometimes nice once we've gotten to the end and your files are coming in to um, sometimes be like, you know, this is what we've seen last week, or this is what we saw in the last couple of weeks. So if you choose to take us up on that, we do have that available. With um, roads, we're taking a lot of all of this into consideration. So if you are currently looking at HR system and you're um, asking for MOTS functionality and you're concerned what might be the difference with roads functionality, um, please reach out to us. We are designing the system to be able to um, take the MOTS legacy files and we are actively working with the EHR providers um, on timelines for when the roads version 2.0 will be available. And that um, is still being built off the same concept and methodology and specifications that the existing legacy um, is using. And so uh, there will be some changes, but it won't be a full overhaul. Um, so again, we've been working collaboratively with um, the HR systems. And if you are going into a project and you've got some questions or concerns, please reach out to myself um, or Kayla. Um, we will assist you in trying to answer any of those concerns and questions because I know we have gotten that from a few others who are doing some changes in systems and we want to make sure we provide all the information necessary for your project to be a success to move into your new system in the MOTS and onto roads. So with that, I will hand it back to you, Kayla, unless we have any questions regarding this topic. I don't see any questions or hands and I don't see anything in the chat, so. Okay, excellent. So this awesome. will be a quick slide. Um, yeah, oh, go ahead, Jody. Oh, it looks like we, we do have a, a question. question. Yeah, we have a hand up. I saw a little hand go, <laughs> Hello, sorry, this is Jonathan. Um, um, basically, I'm sorry, I missed the last portion. So are you guys offering um, or we'll be doing some type of EHR integration for some of this information? Is that what you were saying? So we currently do have a process to um, allow electronic files to be submitted to the current MOT system. We have a specifications guide for EHR or, you know, sometimes an organization has an IT department that might be able to develop this as well. So we have a couple documents that we put out there for, uh, and then we work collaboratively with anybody who is developing that. Um, is um i'm not sure that answered your question completely no that's fine basically um i was going to start using this system um for my mental health practice however a lot of the information that obviously is asked is that we collect that data anyways so it'd be great if we had some type of like integration or process i just wanted to know kind of like the steps to make that happen so that way okay. we're you know, my staff time utilization is being used more wisely. <laughs> correct, <laughs> correct, yeah. Yeah, um, why Hello. don't, um, you know, if you, um, I know that we have a couple, one for sure, um, EHR that has contacted us that is wanting to develop, they, 
said they had existing uh, customers in Oregon. And so I'm not sure if that's the, do you, can you, are you comfortable stating what system you have? Oh, sure. No, that's totally fine. I use Valent.io as a behavioral health EHR system. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Why don't you shoot me an email and um, we can um, talk about that and see how we can get um, maybe connected uh, to see what your possibilities might be. Because I do know there are a few other valent, valent users in Oregon um, and I'm it would be good to have some conversations if you all wanted to with them. So, yes, be happy to provide your email address in the chat box, please. Or is there a way I can yeah. pull it up? Yeah. Okay. Let me, uh, <laughs> Kayla's the pro at the chat box. Uh, let me grab. <laughs> uh, then we'll see if I, I uh, we got these new email addresses. So, um, at OHA. <laughs> Oregon. Sorry about my office assistant. Um, all right. It's it's on alert this morning. Okay. Th that should have come up. Uh, and Kayla and Mary, you can correct me if I did it wrong. I think that's correct. Yep. Looks good, Jody. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Happy to help Jonathan and, and anybody else who's on here that has the questions like this. Um, yeah. That's what we're here for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Any other questions? Um, I forgot to mention, of course, that we always record our webinars and it will be posted. So if you want to read, listen and look at the story about the access issues that uh, have happened in, in March and April and that Mary and Cecilia are working so diligently on, uh, feel free. It should be there usually in, within a day or two. It goes pretty quick. We also have some uh, messengers and some newsletters. Uh, out there on our site with additional information. Sometimes we duplicate information because people don't have the time to listen to a whole webinar and they just want to pick up some items and they can see it right there. The next uh, EDI focused webinar will be on May 3rd. That's the first Wednesday of May and hopefully we'll have some better weather because they keep promising it and it's still not coming, but um, the signups will be out there on our site. Um, thank you all for joining. Anything I missed? Anything anybody would like to throw on the floor? No. Here are our new emails. As you can see, they're all oha.oregon.gov. The website, uh, the email to the team for the mod support. And that was it for today. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Kayla, for driving. And all Got have a wonderful hand raised there, Pete. Got a last minute it, question. It's Jonathan's. Did he re raise his hand or did it still stay up there? Oh, oh my I guess it just didn't go down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought it was. So. OK, thanks everyone. Thanks for keeping an eye on that, uh, Justin. Thank you all very much and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, Pete and Kayla.